Hello everyone, it's Amy and I am here for a supplemental video for Build Your Stash and Craft and this is going to be decorating our homemade Rolodex which hopefully will look a little better when we're done than it does right now. So I've just pulled out, I've decided, um, I just pulled out all of my papers and went through and I found this napkin which I totally love. I used it to sop up something and so I just kind of chose my colors off of that. So I think I'm going to put the napkin on the bottom and then I've got some things, papers here that I can add to the top and we'll see how it turns out in the end. Decorating is not my strong suit, but I'm getting there. Construction is much more my easier thing to do. But I think I'm just going to kind of cover the whole thing and then just rip a couple of holes in the napkin and see if I can put it down over the two rings. Oh, Papa has decided to shred some paper. So hopefully that's not too loud. You might not even be able to hear it. That would be good. But if you can, that's what it is. All right, now, is there any particular part I like better? I really like this one because it's got the, it's got the purple on it. I'm going to maybe put a cut right here. And then put another cut about an inch over. See how that works. Nice thing about these rings is you can kind of squeeze them together where they're too wide and let the paper go down. There we go. Okay, and I don't want a lot of texture in this, but I do want some. So I'm just going to kind of press it how it is. Oh, you can see the tan. I didn't think about that. That you can see the color of the cardboard behind there. But we'll just deal with that. Which isn't hard for me to deal with because I like browns. So... Suppose, well, let me cut it first and take off the extra so that I don't ruin it because I really do like this napkin. There we go. And I think that I might want to make some washi tape in these colors to put around the edges when I'm done. I think that might look pretty. Oh, and the one thing that I did not do on the video where we made our Rolodex is tell you that um, it would be more sturdy to add a second layer of cardboard. So actually, I just, after I was all done, you know, and our rings had come through, I just had another piece of cardboard exactly the same size and I just glued it to the bottom just to make it a little more sturdy. You don't have to do that. Um, one piece of corrugated cardboard is pretty sturdy, but I figured that way it covered up the rings and kind of held them more in place and oh, got a hair there and just made it a little more sturdy. I just like to go for sturdy. So just got this down here and then kind of decide. Hmm, I want to just wrap that around there. I'm not going to put it on the bottom because it'll stick to my paper. Okay, then I just need to decide kind of what I want to do for... I pulled out this heart that I had cut. And even though it's not going to show, because that's going to be completely covered up by the Rolodex cards, I still think that I want to put it on here. Just because I can the whole thing about creating is that you can do whatever you want to do. There's no right or wrong. I 
And that's the one thing that I really like about it. Because I actually have problems with everything having to be perfect. Um, or feeling that they should be. And this actually helps me. It helps me a little bit to get away from that. I think I'm going to cut out of here. I'm going to just cut a couple little hearts. Is this? Oh, this is folded over already. So, I'm just really liking these purples and blues. So when I saw that napkin, I got to pick out all my favorite pieces of purples and blues. And I think I'm just going to kind of pop these around here in different places. I really like this was a blue leaf with water droplets on it and it's still a little too big I'm actually just going to put that over there cut it a little smaller a little too big yeah I like that so I'm gonna stick this one down here and stick this one down here and then I have these little flowers that I wanted to put with that leaf and all of these things I already had, they were things that I had made for something I was doing. So I already had them just hanging out in a, in a folder there. Um, from some other project that we've already done. And kind of when I pulled the stuff out, I kind of knew what I wanted to do with it to a certain extent. I knew I wanted these flowers with that leaf. Just kind of lay them out and see what you think. Yeah, I like that. Oops, <laughs> stuck to my thumb. Yeah, and the thing about this is it's going to be covered up, but I know it's there. That's the thing. I'm going to cut out another heart to go up in that corner. Not sure what I'm going to do down here in the bottom corner. set that on top of that flower um, no I don't I just want to put it up there like that and you can lay this all out before you start to put your glue on it'll make it makes it easier to move things and maybe here's something I think I put that on a card or something And this is what was left over. And that kind of looks like a cloud. So I am going to, if I can... I'm going to pick this heart off of here. And I'm going to put the cloud right up here. Because we have our flowers down there. Just like that. 
because this is cardstock, I'm going to put some oops, more glue underneath. Hmm. Okay, that's it for so far. I think I'm going to make some washi tape to go around the edge and decide if there's anything else I might want to put on there. And I'll be back. Okay, so this is dry now. And um, the only thing, and I did make my washi tape. The only thing I've done is I did add this little arrow here um, from washi tape. I just cut a piece of the washi tape in half and then just put a little point and a little feather and, um, and put that on there and then realized that I wasn't recording. So that's all that I've done. Um, and I did make the washi tape. Now I did cheat on the washi tape and I've tried very hard through this series not to cheat at all, not to use anything that was not part of this series. But when I when I made the washi tape, not thinking about the fact that it was going into the series, I did use some gold paint, which is not which I did not purchase for this series. Um, so the Punchinella here has gold paint through it, and I did use my fan brush to do the splatters. Now, we could use, with what we have, we've just made our glimmer paints and our glimmer glues, and we could use that in place of the gold paint. And um, in any of the brushes that we have bought, you can do splatters with. The fan brush just kind of splatters a little bit more, I guess you might want to say at one time, and that's why most people use them. But you can use a regular brush, and it will splatter just fine also. And as a matter of fact, I think we're going to put some splatters on here, so I'll show you that. So I did want to, you know kind of explain that, you know, I did cheat, I didn't mean to, but but with what we have, we could replace what I've done. Now the Punchinella, um, I did get at Christmas time, it was a bow from Christmas on top of a package. So that's actually a piece of garbage that I collected, but it's not something that we purchased for the series. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own because I wanna use some on here anyways. And so what I'm going to do is I've got this piece, this is a piece of our cardstock, it's one of the jelly prints. And um, I'm actually going to cut this out and fold it in half and make it into a card, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. I really like this one. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this strip of white off the edge. And I'm going to use that to just make our own punchinella. And then use our, our hole punch that we got for this week's series and just punch. And all you do is you just punch a line. I wanna do enough so that I can actually use this, so I'm gonna do the whole thing. But then, and then just go ahead and you're going to punch then between the two holes that are there. And I actually got a little bit close there. When you use your punchinella, it's normally in mixed media. It is normally um, very random. So this does not need to be perfect in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, the punch manila that I used um, was from a bow, and it was actually it was tied into a bow. So um, it was actually quite rough. Um, you know, there were places where it was split a little bit and everything. So you don't need to think, oh, well, I have to have that and I have to go out and buy it. It's a piece of waste from sequins and people started using it as a recycled product and they realized how popular it was. And now you actually, I think you can buy it at the store. But, you know, what's the point when you can just make your own? And this will work just fine. And I could have made this larger. Uh, my hole punch would go all the way to there. Let's see, let me show you. My hole punch would go this far. So I could make it as wide as, I could probably make it two or three inches wide and still reach all the way across if I wanted a larger piece. So that's how you make your own punchinella. You punch it. <laughs> and now I have little punches all over. I guess that's the one thing about that whole punch is it doesn't, I didn't realize it didn't have a guard on it till just now when I was making all of these punches. Okay, so now we've got our punchinella and we've got our washi tape. I think I'll do some decorating on this before I put the washi tape on. 
and um, I just I want to I think I'm gonna do the punchinella first and I will draw around I do want to edge everything and I think I'm gonna edge it in color I and then just put a little black in maybe for shading And that's a lot of white, which I did not need that much white. Now, the other thing is I did not paint my rings. I could have. Um, and I didn't paint them on purpose. Um, you might think this is just weird, but it's like the blue cap is grandpa's milk and the red cap is our milk. And so I just like, I just kind of left it that way because I thought that was cool. I probably would have painted it if... Um, I had used like two of the same. And you just got to love the little circles in Punchinella. I say that every time because I really do like them. I'm going to get some right in here. And that's the nice thing about this little thin strip is I can fit it in wherever I want to, just about anyways. And there, I think that's probably good enough. I could sit and do this all day, so I better remember to stop. See, that looks really cool, and it worked really well. And I'm going to take just a little bit of our black paint and water it down and put a few um, splatters on there with the black. And it's just a very little bit. I have took out too much white there already. But I can just take what's left over when I'm done here and just put it on one of my Rolodex cards as a background or an edging. And then just take one of my paintbrushes. I'm going to put some, a little bit of parchment paper there. <laughs> and I'm telling you, any paintbrush will work, and then this one's not wanting to work very well. But it is still working. I think my biggest part is that when I made my washi tape, I made a mess with the splattering. And now I'm trying to be a little bit careful. Because I'm here at my dining room table, so I really don't need to get it all over the floor and everything. I always work here because then when Papa comes over, he likes to see what I'm working on. But there we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it did some really nice splotches on there. And I really like them because it's a little bit more controlled. So there we go. So there's our splatters and our punchinella. I'm going to outline around and put some washi tape on. And... I think that this will be done. I'm going to upload this really quickly because otherwise I'm going to go too long and I'll be right back. Okay, so everything is dry now and I am just going to do a little bit of doodling around. I want to try it in color. I almost always do black. That's just my favorite. But I thought why not try doing it in some color and then maybe just adding a little bit of black shading. But I just thought it might be good to go around them in a matching color and see how that looks. I figured it this way. If I don't like it, black will cover up the matching color and I can just go over it in black. But, you know, it's just more to make it stand out a little bit, separate it from the back of the page. So it doesn't always have to be black or white. And I even want to come up onto my heart a little bit. But yeah, I think I like the way that looks. 
So, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you because the black the black splatter is hard to see. I did want to show you the splatters on my paper here that I thought would show up a little better. So it does really splatter well with other kinds of um, other kinds of brushes. But. So, yeah, and the thing is with all of this is, by the time you put your Rolodex cards on, especially once you have Rolodex cards on both sides, um, you're really not going to see any of this. But I just like the fact of knowing that it's there. And I didn't want it to just be straight cardboard, but I could have just colored it with a, covered it with a piece of my decorative paper, a jelly plate or something like that so that it wasn't plain and just left it that way. But I just thought it might be kind of fun to decorate it also. And so that's why I'm doing this, but this is not something that you're gonna need to do. It's just something that I wanted to do. Because decorating is really my bad part, so I figured I needed a little practice because building is my strong point. So, let's see. I, I still think I want to do the heart in black. And I did put, I did pull out my markers and I put my markers in my paint caddy, in my paintbrush caddy, so that that would, uh, I'd have a place to put them and it would kind of be in the same place. So I'm just going to do, I want to do my arrow and my heart in black. And maybe I'll even do around this leaf or whatever you want to call it. I think I might do that in black also. See, I'm back to my black. But at least I did a little bit in color. And my paper's very rough, so, you know, my lines are not going to be real straight. And that's kind of the whole point of it. It's just to give it a little bit, like this arrow you couldn't see at all, um, really, without... Uh, the edging around it and so this just helps things to stand out if there are things on your paper that you kind of just want to blend into the background a little bit you want them there but you don't want them to pop out then don't outline them only outline the things that you want to stand out more than what they already are and then that will give you that dimension when you outline in black, it kind of makes it look like a shadow a little bit behind whatever you're outlining. So, but even the blue makes it kind of look like a shadow. So, I'm just going to finish this up really quick and then put the washi tape on. And then I'll put my Rolodex cards back in. And I did a, the uh, counted cross stitch, I made Papa a choo-choo train yesterday. He came over and we were just sitting and talking and I have a hard time just sitting and doing nothing. So I thought, well, I'll work on a choo-choo train while he's here because I think he'll be able to see it. And he could, I got about halfway done and he said, well, that looks like a train. So, um, I took the leftover paint that I had from doing that and I just used a napkin that was sitting on the table and I just pounced the paint onto a couple of my Rolodex cards. So, and that's a nice thing. Now, you've, if you do this and you have your Rolodex cards, whenever you do anything where you have extra paint, you can always just grab a couple of Rolodex cards and throw that paint right onto them. 
and then you'll have a place to put that extra paint. Or you can do it on, you know, any of your papers. You can do that too. I think I'm gonna go around this flower in red. The flowers on top of the leaves I edged before I put them on, so I'm not gonna bother to go around them. And I think I'm even gonna do this heart in red. It is a heart after all. There. That just kind of makes everything pop just a little bit more. You could do so much more. You know, I love to do little swirls inside of my punchinella and that type of thing. But because this is going to be covered, I don't need to go too far with it. And now I'm just going to take some of my washi and put it on here. I don't really want to have a whole lot on the top. Oops. And I do want it to be straight, so I, sh I think I'm going to put it on from the bottom. I can kind of tell more if I'm even. There we go. I better cut that before I put it around the edge. Before I... So there we go. Just put that on there like that. And that'll nicely finish off the edges. And also, if you think that your washi is not going to stick, um, you can just put a little bit of glue behind it, and that will help it to stay down. Or if you find later on it's starting to lift, just go put a little bit of glue behind it. Just, just run just a little tiny bead. with all this texture I'm not sure that it will stick and sometimes it just doesn't want to Right. It's going to stick to the cardboard much better than it's going to stick to the front side because of the cardboard just being flat paper where it doesn't have it doesn't have any air gaps it doesn't have you know like where you've got your wrinkles you'll have little air gaps and I covered it with the water glue which makes on the front which makes it kind of slick so sometimes those are the reasons that if you put something on there that sticky um, it doesn't want to stick because especially when you put some kind of a clear coat and even your water glue is a clear coat and gives it a bit of a shine so I am just going to what did I do with my pen I'm going to really quickly make the point of my arrow on top of my washi tape because I don't want that underneath and then I'm going to put the other two sides on and I'll come back and show you we'll put the Rolodex cards in so here is my Rolodex all finished and I just have the tape all the way around the edges I thought about edging or doing some doodling on the tape but I've decided that this is as far as I want to go and I am very happy with it I like the way that it looks so in one tip, um, I did show you how if you put your cards on there, um, that with the little um, barbs on the ring, you can stand them up like this. Okay, now the only thing is, is that when you do that, make sure that the barbs 
in the front of your Rolodex are the barbs that are pointing up because they all go the same way. So right now, mine in the back, my barbs are here. See, and, and something would sit on that. But in the front, my barbs are facing down. So nothing will sit on that. So if I wanted to stand one up like I showed you, I would have to stand it up in the back. And, and once those start to get full, you won't be able to do that. So when you do your milk rings, just make sure that your barbs, when you're decorating, make sure that the barbs that are in what's will, what will be the front of your thing, make sure that those are the barbs that are not pointing down, but the barbs that are actually pointing up like that. So, but I'm still happy with it, and I don't know that I'd stand one up anyways. I did add the word create in the middle, and then this is just the little build your stash card I made for it, and that one's going to stay right in the front. I have a few others that um, have some, some wipe-offs and stuff on it, so I'm going to put those in the front. You just put those onto your rings. And then I have all the others, and again, everything that's here, um, except for this, this is one original, that's an actual Rolodex card, and um, I just keep it there to show myself that, you know, what I have is the same as what that one is, to show that it is exactly the same. And then I'm just going to, and I just put them on a few at a time, just put it right through your little slit. And again, I think I said this already, but this is just four pages of our, I have too many there. And my little slits aren't lined up super well. Oh, come on, get them apart. Um, yep, four pages of cardstock. And once you decorate them, I'm going to guess that probably just these four pages will fill your Rolodex once you start decorating and get that um, lift in there. So, um... And if I wasn't trying to put on a whole bunch at a time, it wouldn't be that hard. But there we go. This is what our homemade Rolodex looks like. I am really happy with it. And, and it works really well. So if you want to make Rolodex cards like some of the others are doing, basically it's a Rolodex ATC is what it is. And, um, you know, now you can make your own Rolodex. You don't even have to go find one. And you can just play along and have a good time. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you try a Rolodex if you don't have one because they are fun to have. And you don't have to use them for art cards either. You can use them for, you know, your, your friends on YouTube. You can use them for their channels. You can use it as a regular Rolodex for your addresses and phone numbers of your friends. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.